So hi, hello and welcome, Microbe Hunter here and today I'd like to look at so-called diatomaceous earth under the microscope. This is diatomaceous earth and it's probably a hundred thousand years old. Well, what is it? Well, diatomaceous earth um, can be bought yeah, in a container like this as a dietary supplement. I cannot believe this. I probably would not eat it. Uh, it's also not uh, indicated on the information sheet what it's supposed to be good for. But in any case, it's a beautiful specimen to put under the microscope. Now, diatomaceous earth has been uh, yeah, mined already for uh, quite a long time because of its many uses that I would like to talk about. And one of the important uses this is of course microscopy because we all enjoy doing a little bit of nature observation this way. I've taken out a small sample of this diatomaceous earth, mixed it with water, put it on a microscope slide and then observed it. And uh, what I'm going to do now is, is I'm going to go up with the magnification. So I'm going to start at the low magnification using my four times objective. You were not able to see a lot really. Um, yeah, like uh, over here, for example, hmm, just a whole bunch of debris and dots, a little bit an occasional piece of dirt maybe or air bubble, but really nothing very interesting. But as we go up with the magnification all the way um, to a uh, hundred times, so with uh, the hundred times oil immersion objective, giving me a total magnification of a thousand times, we're able to see very beautiful structures here. Um, yeah, I'm going to show this to you. Diatomaceous earth has a lot of different uses. Um, and uh, one of the yeah, earlier uses or well-documented uses um, was in the use in explosives. Yes, <laughs> diatomaceous earth is itself um, is quite stable. It is a silica, but when mixed with nitroglycerin, um, then it becomes dynamite. And Alfred Nobel, this is the gentleman who has founded the Nobel Prize. Um, he earned his money by making dynamite, uh, by mixing nitroglycerin with diatomaceous earth because this stabilized it and made the transport of, nitro uh, of, of dynamite and the explosive much more safe. Um, otherwise, you, know, you bump against the nitroglycerin and it exploded, but by mixing it with the diatomaceous earth, um, yeah, it got really stable and could be used. And that's why Alfred Nobel, um, yeah, he later on then decided to use some of his money money um, for the Nobel Prize because it is also seen that dynamite has been used also for quite destructive uh, purposes as well. But nowadays that diatomaceous earth has also a variety of other uses. Uh, it can be found in some toothpastes um, as an abrasive material to clean your teeth because it's uh, very fine. It's almost like a, like a sandpaper, very, very fine sandpaper. Um, it has also been used in fil filtering material because it's very porous and therefore is able to filter out um, uh, substances and a variety of other things um, as well. Now, the container that I bought here, um, it's sold as a dietary supplement. I personally, I have to tell you, I probably do not want to eat it because silica is such, I don't know, you shouldn't inhale it because it's uh, not good for your lungs either. Uh, but um, yeah, in any case, um, it does look nice under the microscope. Scope. This here is now a live diatom um, and you know it's alive because it has a color because the green color here that is because of the chloroplast which is uh, doing photosynthesis and um, yeah after all diatoms uh, are responsible for producing a lot of oxygen in the earth's atmosphere and what has happened over the course of earth's history is that those diatoms that have those silica cell walls when they died off uh, then this, uh, they settled on on the ground uh, and uh, on the seafloor or on the uh, ground of lakes and they got compressed into the ground and then all of the organic material decomposed but the silica cell wall the so-called the frustules they survived um, over the ages and uh, these are the ones that we're now able um, able to see the question is is now is it possible to also prepare those diatom cell walls yourself uh, out of living diatoms um, yes it's possible um, and what you have to do is, is you have to collect those diatoms so you have to find a water sample and in many cases they're growing on the side uh, of on rocks maybe um, you know, on, on surfaces and if you scratch uh, them off um, and if you put it under the microscope then you're going to see of course that many of them are still alive and uh, what you need to then do is, is you need to remove all of the organic material uh, from the diatoms how do you do that well hmm, that is a little bit dangerous you have to use hydrogen peroxide and the hydrogen peroxide will oxidize and remove all of the organic substances and what is left over are those beautiful um, yeah diatom cell walls where you can uh, yeah where you can make a permanent mount of them and then they store for a very long time 
What I'm doing here right now is, is I'm simply playing around a little bit with the settings of my microscope. Uh, you see that there is a color change going on and this is because I'm shifting and rotating a prism around that I have in my microscope. Why am I doing that? Well, because many of the uh, images that you've seen right now are kind of rather dull in color. Um, so this is a possibility to add a little bit of color. Now diatoms are not uh, polarizing, uh, at least uh, the ones that I have here, they are um, amorphous um, and therefore they uh, are not uh, optically active. and. Uh, Therefore, it can also be a little bit difficult sometimes uh, to see them, um, especially if the surrounding mounting medium has the same refractive index uh, as uh, the cell walls, as those diatoms here. And uh, for this reason, I recommend that if you want to make yourself a diatom slide, that you try different mounting media with different refractive index, um, simply to ensure that you're able to see all of the details. Because if the refractive index of the mounting media and the frustules of the diatoms, if they're the same, you're not going to see anything because they have no color. Um, so I recommend that you do a little bit of experimentation around and you can change the refractive index of your mounting medium simply by adding sugar. So make sure that you really dissolve sugar very well. Make sure that there is uh, there are no air bubbles um, and then try uh, using this as a mounting medium and then maybe you're able to see a little bit of, of a difference here as well. Now, uh, those uh, yeah diatoms uh, in the 19th century, uh, this was a popular hobby among microscopists is, is to make permanent slides using those diatoms, but by arranging the diatoms manually using an eyelash. So the eyelashes, they are very pointed and thin on the end. And what you can do is, is you can under the microscope manipulate the individual diatoms around and uh, for this uh, yeah this way you're able to make beautiful arrangements and there are many um, yeah historic microscope slides uh, I think they must be quite expensive because the collectors items or diatoms have uh, were arranged now diatoms under the microscope you're quickly going to see that there are two different kinds um, they are the elongated ones they're called the pennate diatoms and uh, these are quite uh, commonly found at least I found them quite commonly in freshwater and then there are also those so-called radially symmetrical ones that are either triangular in shape or they're round. And uh, it doesn't matter how you rotate them, they always uh, look the same as they don't have a left and a right side, but they're radially symmetrical. And uh, in this diatomaceous earth sample, I found, uh, I found both of them. Um, now, you might wonder a little bit why the diatoms are that small. And I think one of the reasons is, is that uh, many of them probably have already broken down because um, over the course of Earth's history, there's a lot of pressure um, and the diatomaceous Earth is not really loose, but it's really compressed. It's very hard. And I can imagine that this pressure also destroyed, especially the larger diatoms. So this here, beautiful uh, picture again, um, is using phase contrast microscopy, which allows you to see that the diatom, di diatom frustules are bright on a darker background. So uh, yeah, you can use uh, different uh, microscopic uh, techniques to experiment um, around here a little bit. Now, uh, I would uh, like uh, to now encourage you yourself to go out to collect diatoms, go out on the pond, uh, scratch some material off from a rock, put it under the microscope, and I tell you, probably Probably um, they look a little bit more interesting even because you, see, you can see a large variety of different diatoms. Yeah, some of them are arranged in uh, packets, uh, some of them are single, and many of them are also able uh, to move around and glide around on the surface um, of your microscope slide plenty of things to observe. Well, for me, that's it uh, today. I hope that you enjoyed the video again. Happy microbe hunting as always, and uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.